I am Munzer Amira. I'm a refugee from Aida camp. I was in prison for nearly three months the last time. In total, I spent nearly two years. I can speak about this experience as an unusual experience in prison. It, it was not like any experience before. Uh, I was in prison without any kind kind of charges, which they call it administrative detention. It's an, uh, a British uh, law that they used to use during the British mandate before 75 years here and more. I am an activist here in Palestine and a human rights defender trying to defend our people from this occupation, trying to stand with the people who are uh, under the threat of the settlers, I'm trying to raise the voice of the victims here. I'm trying to raise the voice of Gaza children. This is, this is what I'm doing in my life, being with the people. I spent in the Israeli prison the last time th three months without any kind of charges. I was in prison for no reason, and I was released for no reason. I don't know how they released me, when they released me. They just decide, خلاص, you can go home. Uh, this is what they call administrative detention. Being arrested is a very hard experience, which would start from here, from your house. Raiding the house, start broking everything that they would face, the soldiers, the Israeli soldiers. They, by a mistake, they enter into my mother's house before they came to me. They, they brought my brother from there, handcuffed. They beaten him the whole way between my house and my mother's house. He reached my house and lost conscious, but after they beaten him. And from here, the start of the suffering journey that I had for three months. It was actually, it was my, with my brother, with my two sons. They, uh, they handcuffed both of them uh, and they threw them uh, into the house. And one of them, one of the children, my children, they start, after they handcuffed him, they start cutting his T-shirt uh, because he was wearing uh, a T-shirt with the map of Palestine. They collapse everything in the house and they start threatening me, beating me in front of my family. Uh, they handcuffed me and they took me inside the camp, which was w weird why they took me there, but they want to humiliate me in front of the people there. So they beaten me again in, in, the, in the street. Uh, so we returned back near my home. My little daughter was on the window. She did very big mistake. She told me, I love you. So I tried to reply, I was handcuffed and they put something on my eyes. I was blind without, I could not see. So I just heard her voice, I love you. So I told her, don't worry. This was the biggest mistake. I love you too. So after that, they start beating me from here till the entrance of the military basement near the, the camp. There I lost, at that place I lost conscious. Uh, they brought the doctor. It was not because they want me to, you know, to be good or to, you know, to see what's happening there. So they, what happened was they want to continue what they started. Uh, after I, I was better, they put me into a vehicle. All the soldiers who enter into that vehicle, it was a big one, they went through my back, putting their legs on, on my back, going inside. Uh, the whole way they were beating me. After that, they changed the car into a private one, sending me for a military basement. I don't know where 
threatening me to, that they will send me to Gaza. You know, to the, there I will be shaheed according to what they want. They said, we will make your dream as a reality. So I asked them, what is my dream? They said, you want to be shaheed. I told them, no way. I'm fighting for life, not for death. So I don't want to be shaheed. So they said, today we will send you to Gaza. It was kind of threat, trying, you know, to, to play with me. At the end, I found myself into an uh, interrogation center, uh, asking me about my activism, what I'm doing. I try to, to reply that I'm a nonviolent activist, and I, I, I'm not doing anything against the law, even your law. And what I'm doing is standing with the children of Gaza. So they try to say that I'm part of the armed resistance, and. Uh, I'm doing activities uh, against the army. So I told them what I'm doing, I'm raising the voice of the children in Gaza. I don't want this war to continue. This was my fault. So at the end, uh, the, the officer there said, Mabrouk, the administrative detention. So congratulations that uh, you will be part of the administrative detention and you will spend months here you will be with us through this way this way it, yes i can speak about it but it was very long things like it was the first time that i was walking on four you are handcuffed from your legs and your hands and you have to put your your face on the ground reaching the ground imagine uh, and if you just try to look here, right or left, they will beat you in your head with a, a big stick, black one. I, I have beaten here many times. Every time I try to, to see where am I, I don't know where am I, till we reach offer. And here is the second part of, of this uh, painful, I would say, journey that I had. Before, before finishing the irrigation, uh, uh, there was a very hard place that I was in. They sent me to an office. I was handcuffed. I was happy because they cut the handcuff because it's a plastic one. So I could not feel even my hands. It was for more than 14 hours handcuffed. So I tried to, you know, to move my hands. So they start, said, Let's start the party. They said it in Hebrew. Uh, and take some pictures. Let's start the party and take some pictures. So this time I, I was afraid that there's something would happen because I, I heard before what's happening with the prisoners there. So they told me that we are doing a security check. So you have to take off your clothes. So I tried to take my T-shirt, so it's OK. So they said, your trousers. So I said, manshi. At the end, they want me to take off my underwear. I was like 10 times in the Israeli jails before. Nothing happened like that. And nobody asked me to take my underwear. So I, I refused. They start beating me again and have handcuffed me and I was on the ground. So they took my underwear. Before that, I can tell you that I don't know the real meaning of sexual harassment. Till two soldiers, I was thrown in the ground naked, fully naked without nothing. They catch me from my hands. You know, it's the worst thing that happened with me in my life. Touching me in this aggressive way. It was very hard experience that I, even I could not tell you about. This is the first time that I know that it is the hardest experience could be with you to be harassed by them. So there is, Again, I stand up, they want me to stand, to raise my 
leg, right leg, left leg, do like this. So they were, I, I, I assume that they were taking pictures or videos. So I don't know if they will, you know, launch these videos, spread them. I don't know. But there were a lot of soldiers there. Like, I'm speaking about more than seven soldiers there. And there were, these soldiers were males and females. This was hurting me more. Uh, and they were laughing, trying to humiliate me. So uh, this is what happened there. And it was not the first time. And it was the first time, but it was not the last time. Again, when they moved us to Alfar, we have to do the same. But this time, they did not give me back my underwear. So they gave me the uniform of the prison. We call it Shabazz clothes. Uh, without uh, the underwear. So, yes, I spent like after that one half month without my underwear. Imagine that your dream to have underwear. Speaking about sexual harassment, it was not the last one being naked or doing with that but and I heard about it before but I could not imagine what is happening with the people so they would do it every time it was I would tell you that it was the first time that I experienced this that a Palestinian political prisoner would suicide and kill himself because he could not continue his life there because it was very hard situation there so and in every movement in your life there inside prison i could not say life because it's not a life it was death that something bad happened so which sent some of the palestinian political prisoners to suicide to kill themselves so one time they well, the other experience that i will tell you that one time young man took a decision that that's it I will kill myself he tried to throw himself from the fence it's seven meters high he threw himself so we saw him bleeding on the ground so we tried to call a doctor to knock the door and it was one of the biggest mistakes that we did that we knocked the door trying to tell them, brought, bring a doctor for him. So they came, yes, and they, they recognized that we were knocking the door in, from our cell. So they came, they threw him out, and they came back with the unit. The unit they called Cater. Cater is the unit of offer. The unit that is responsible to stop any kind of revolution against the, the administration of the prison. So the cater came, it's, it contains more than 20 guards with two big dogs, bigger than a donkey. So they opened our cell, we were 13 people inside that cell. And they attacked us, putting us into the corner, handcuff us on the back, and they threw us outside on the out yard in front of 20 cells contained 250 people, prisoners. And they put us on each other's. So my bad luck was that I came on uh, an old guy. So I try, and he, he was very old. So I tried to help him going to the ground. So I was handcuffed and my face was on the ground. So they saw that I moved myself. So one of the guards came and he put his leg into my, my head and he started passing the big uh, piece of wood that they are hitting us with through my head, 
going through my shoulders, my back, till he put the, it between my legs. And he, so I, I was afraid. I saw that he's, he's harassing me. He, he's trying to do something. So just in one moment, he took it off and knock it again. So I moved. And I, I don't know if this is a sexual harassment or not. I start shaking. It was not just humiliating. It was a painful thing that you could not imagine. This is another experience that I can tell the people about what is this ugly occupation his guards inside prison is doing with us as a political prisoners. And we were not carrying guns. We were, and we were not fighting to kill the people. Our fight was to live free. We want Palestine to be free. We want all to live free. We don't want to kill each other. We try to raise our voice to tell the whole world, stop this aggression against our people in Gaza. And we, the Palestinian people, want to live in peace. This was my mistake to reach this place with this humiliation, with this harassment, I would tell you that when I was looking at the gate of the cell, I could tell you that I saw this gate as a, a gate of a grave. We were in a, a, a real cemetery that we will not, I, w I, I did not saw myself free again. So I said, that's it. This is the end. I will be dead here. What were the conditions like inside the prison? How does it compare to the previous times you have been in the prison? Please describe as much as you can. It's, it's not like, this experience was not like any time before. With everything, humiliating the people, we were very strong. We, we did not through the last 50 years that we were in the Israeli jails, let anyone humiliate us. But they separate now, and they are doing so many things to humiliate us day and night. Imagine that humiliating you started from 5 a.m. when they are coming to do the security check every day. Imagine that they have to come to count us. Usually, the, last the first experience for me was in 1987. When they come to do the security check, it was to stand up like this. Now, and they would come and check and count us. Now they are, they are counting us. You have to be in your knees like this. And you have to put your eyes on the ground. They don't want any kind of connection between you and them. So if you move, you will be punished. And you have to do it three times a day. Imagine that you would be humiliated three times a day. This is, this is the, the minimum. Uh, I would tell you that through the last 50 years that we, the Palestinian prisoners, fighted for our rights. We used to have books. We used to have pens. We used to have papers. We used to have TV. We used to have radio all the rights that you can imagine as a political prisoner. And it was not because Israel is a good state or they are giving. It was because we were fighting the last 50 years. We lost more than 230 people who have been killed inside the Israeli jails through this process, through hunger strike, attacking us, trying to fight, yes, we, we, we reach in a good place. But now, it's worse than Guantanamo, that you don't have anything. It's an empty room that they took everything from there. You have nothing to do, even the papers. Then you could not write anything. 
uh, and you are thrown there without any kind of connection with your family. Imagine that there are people since the 7th of October, they, are, they don't know what is happening with their families. The only connection that if someone would be arrested from your camp or your village, and he will be in the same section, so he would t tell you that your family is okay, or your mother died, or your father died, or your brother have been killed. You don't know. So imagine that you are praying that someone would be arrested from your camp. It's a very bad thing. Uh, and it's not the only, yani, it's both. Physically on the ground that you don't have enough food, you don't have all the equipments for your life inside prison. And psychologically, that they are trying to humiliate you. Imagine on the middle of the night, someone would come, Adad, Adad means we, we are going to count you. So you have to wake up, punishing you for everything. The, I would tell you the amount of food, how they are giving us the food, that the amount of food that enough for one cell with 13 people, they would give the whole section for 20 rooms. The amount like this small uh, plate of rice, which would not be enough for one person, it will be for four persons. Imagine that we don't have uh, a spoon. You have, you have to eat the rice with the fork. And it's a plastic one. If it's broken, خلاص. We don't have enough plates, so they would put the rice into a plastic so as to eat it. Like the animals. They want us to, to deal even with ourselves like the animals. And you, they used to say, when they, they are coming to count us, animals, we are going to count you. Or, I'm so sorry, motherfuckers, we are coming to count you. This is how they are dealing with us. So yes, the, the last 50 years we, we were fighting not to do these things. They were not doing it. But after the 7th of October, everything they are doing. And it's, it's not, you know, it's the easiest. Imagine that they release the dogs against some prisoners that they, typically they e ate them, their legs. I know a prisoner that they ate his leg and they left him without any kind of treatment. Our medicine, it, one of the things that we did a big fight and we passed a long hunger strike with it to have our medication. Imagine that I had a court decision. I, I had two kinds of medicine that I have to get. One for the high blood pressure and the second one for the prostate. Imagine that uh, after three weeks, I got the, the first type, but for my prostate, I didn't get to have it till the end of the, the last two days. So I spent more than one month, one and a half, I would tell you, bleeding. When I'm going to the bathroom, I was having just blood. So I lost my blood. At the end, after less than three months, I lost 33 kilos. I, we didn't use to have sugar, imagine, the whole period without sugar, without tea. No, tea, the last, the last, the last two weeks we had tea, like it, it was not hot even. We, don't, we didn't have coffee at all. Even the smokers, usually we used to have like five cigarettes a day and we can buy from the cantina. We don't have cantina, they close the cantina, and we don't have the five cigarettes at all. There are people six months, the last six months, they didn't have any cigarette. Uh, if you ask them that sometimes they used to bring the food without cooking it well, like the, the eggs, without cooking it at all. So if you would try to tell them that you brought the eggs without cooking them, you will be punished. And they will not punish you when you are doing a mistake. They would punish you and they will punish the whole cell. 13 people will be punished because of you if you ask for something that they would, would don't, don't like. And always the reply would be, 
you are not in a hotel. Yes, I'm, I'm in a prison, but I know my rights. So punishing you, it's another story. If they would punish you, so they, they, there is three kinds of punishment, attacking you directly and beating you, and you will go through two rows of guards. They will beating you the whole way. The second, they will take your mattress and your, your uh, blanket outside your room for one or two days. You will spend them in this cold without them. And the third time, it's the worst. At the personal one, they will take you to the center of the prison we call the Makhlul, where they have like four or five, five big cells. So you have to be, they will tie, handcuff you on the back and on the way you will be beaten and your head have to be on the ground the whole way. And they, they will throw you there. And you will, have, you will have very bad luck if you don't have other prisoners with you. So from 6 o'clock in the morning till 9 o'clock at the night. Imagine if you want to, to go to the bathroom. You have to get someone helping you to open your trouser and you can go to the bathroom. If not, it's the catastrophe that you would do it in yourself. You will wait to yourself and imagine yourself coming back to the cell, waiting after you wet your clothes. We know that it happened. So we will make ourselves, we don't know, and we will not ask. You will come and put yourself under your blanket and that's it. So, this is the situation there. This is some very few from the things that happened with me, with the other prisoners. So many things I could tell you that I would not forget. But I would not forget that person which they brought him onto a wheelchair. He was even blind. They enter him into our section and he was wounded even in his legs. So we discovered he was from Gaza. He lost his eyes, he's handicapped, he lost. And he was in a wheelchair, could not walk. They enter him in, by a mistake. I would not forget the sounds of other prisoners crying after they attack them. I would not un forget that some of the prisoners, they used to throw the yogurt on the ground and they forced them to eat it from the ground. I would not forget an old person that he was asking for his medicine. He was very old. He was nearly 70, 70 years old. So I, I know Hebrew, so I tried to, to help him to tell them that he wants his medicine. And they attacked me, they beat me because I was trying to, to help him. I would not forget so many things. I would not forget that in one time, I lost hope. I saw myself as a crazy. I, I, I was very close to lose my mental health because the aggression they are using and how they are putting us into a place like animals. So this is, this is, this is these, all these things I would not forget. Imagine that when I was in prison, I, I, I weight, my weight was nearly 108 kilos more. And, and when I was released, I was just 75 kilos. Imagine three months losing this weight. 
33 kilos. It was, yes, it was because I didn't have my medication. And the main reason, no food, but the most important reason, it was psychological one because we don't know what is happening outside. I, don't, I didn't know what happened with my family. I, they attacked my family in very aggressive way. I, don't, I didn't have any kind of news from my family. So I was just thinking what happened there. Without food, without treatment, yes, this is what happened. I have been arrested again because that I was trying to raise the voice of the children of Gaza. I was trying to raise the voice of the Palestinians that we are fighting for peace, not for death, for life, not, not for death. We, we had till now more than 50, 35,000 people who have been killed. Most of them are children and women there in Gaza and in, here in the West Bank. I was trying to, to stand fastness, the people on their land here, to support them, to be with them as a peace activist and to do it even in a nonviolent way. But as usual, they don't want us to live as humans, as free people. They want us to, to live as slaves, to shut down and to shut our mouths and not to speak about anything that they are doing, all the crimes that they are doing against my people. So I was in administrative detention without any kind of charges. And it was not me alone. I'm speaking about more than nearly now 3,000 Palestinian prisoners who are there suffering without any kind of charges. I would be lying if I would tell that it did not affect me or my family or even the whole community. Yes, it affected us in very aggressive way. They are afraid. They don't mean any more to be part of, of any kind of, of activism because they, they, it started affecting them after the night raid, attacking them. They are worried even about me, about my health, about my mental health, even how they did with me the last three months. But I would tell you that I have to be stronger because I witnessed what is happening there. I'm speaking about 10,000 Palestinian political prisoners who are suffering I would say that they are dead inside. And I described these prisons as cemeteries and these cells as graves, that the people are there like the dead people. Nobody knows about their suffering. So no, even it's a hard experience and it affected my family in very negative way because they are afraid, afraid about themselves and they are afraid that the next time I may lose my life because of my activism. But we have to be strong. I believe that the way that I'm doing it is the best way. I'm trying to do it in a non-violent way. I'm trying to raise the voice of these prisoners, 10,000 people who are suffering inside the Israeli jails. Uh, I'm trying to raise the voice of our children in Gaza, our people in Gaza, who are starving now. I'm trying even to support the people here to, to be strong, to be together, so as to live free and to end this occupation. I have no choice. I have to continue. I want to tell the people that there are 10,000 people inside these graves, inside the Israeli jails. Nobody knows about them and they are not criminals. It's very important to know that they are political, political 
prisoners that they were fighting for life, not for death. They want their people to live free. And they are isolated. Nobody knows what's happening with them. The only number that we know is like 42 people have been killed there. We know just the names of 13 of them. These, these are, I'm, I'm speaking about the people who have been killed inside the Israeli jail, jails after the, the 7th of October. And we know that other, we have another 200 prisoners from Gaza have been killed. So, yes, it is, it is very hard, but we have to raise their voice to let them free, to live free, or at least to have their rights inside prison. Yes, we would accept, we are political prisoners, we are part of the fight, but with some rights that we fighted, we were fighting for these rights since, since 1967, through the, the, the long years to have these rights, but now they are without any kind of rights. So let's raise their voice, let's be with them, let's remember them that this, ugly occupation is killing them day and night inside their cells. And it's not just the prisoners, we the Palestinians now. We are under very hard attack from the Israeli occupation and it's not just Gaza, yes, in Gaza is our big pain as Palestinians. This huge number of martyrs, the starving there, demolishing the houses. But I would say they are bombing Gaza, yes, but even their hands is here in the West Bank and Jerusalem they are confiscating more and more land. They are throwing the Palestinian people out of their land. They are separ separating between Jerusalem and the people here in the West Bank. It's forbidden for us to reach even Jerusalem. They are blocking the, the, the camps, the villages, the cities, separating between them, building more walls, demolishing more houses. So we have to be aware that the Palestinians now under very big attack and having very hard situation which needs a stand from the free people to end this occupation.